Welcome back to Comic Book News. Today we're going to talk about Superman Smashes the Clan, an adaptation of an old radio serial from 1946, uh, today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome to the show. Today on Comic Book News, we're going to talk about Superman Smashes the Clan. This is written by Gene Luen Yang and a team called Guri Hero. Apologies if I mess up the names here. Guri Hero is a uh, team from Saitama, Japan, composed of Chifugo Sasaki and Naoko Kawano, uh, two female artists who won a manga contest and were um, encouraged to uh, try out for American comics, have done a ton of work for Marvel including um, Power Pack, uh, the Pet Avengers, and a bunch of others, mostly, you know, sort of kid-oriented comics with a manga-flavored style. Um, and then Gene Luen Yang uh, originally broke through by writing a book called American Born Chinese, a sort of semi-autobiographical graphic novel about... Um, you know, being Chinese, growing up in America, being a Chinese American, and uh, went on to uh, write Superman. He wrote uh, Superman, drawn by John Romita Jr. for a long run. Added some interesting new stuff to the Superman canon, including like new superpower for Superman, where he could shoot out all of his power through his heat vision and, and lose his powers for a day, sort of making him human again. Something that hasn't been used a lot since then. But um, as an interesting thing to toy around with. Um, anyway, he also wrote the, uh, a book called The New Superman. He's written a bunch of other stuff. He uh, was appointed the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. So this is one of those art comics guys. He comes from the Bay Area. So I knew him a lot growing up when I used to do events at libraries and stuff. Um, he would often be uh, in those same type of, of events. So hey, um, but let's jump in and take a look at Superman Smashes the Clan number one here in the Million Dollar Comics Cam. So just for reference here in the uh, in the Comics Cam, I put a regular size issue of, of, of Superman. This is uh, the size of um, Superman Smashes the Clan. You may notice that I have a different cover. This is a variant cover. Um, that I picked up because it's drawn by the great Kyle Baker, one of my all-time favorite artists. Uh, however, it's not a great representation of, of the art or the story or the tone or anything in this book. Um, and, and we're going to talk about that in the wrap-up. So for now, let's just uh, go into the story a little bit. I'm not going to go through all of 80 pages of it, but I'll briefly show um, what I really loved about this was this was a period piece for Superman, right? So they set it um, in the 40s. And this is, you know, when Superman's powers were still really early on and not fully baked. It's not really well known that a lot of the things we associate with the Superman character, things really common, like the Daily Bugle, like, um, sorry, not the Daily Bugle, but the Daily Planet, the fact that he worked at a newspaper, Kryptonite even, um, elements like that were not originated in the comics. They were actually originated in the radio serials of Superman that came really soon after Superman came out. And those got incorporated back into the comics. I was really fascinated to find that out. I found that out from my friend JK, who's a frequent watcher and longtime commenter uh, here on Comic Book News. So anyhow, um, what I loved about this book was that uh, Superman... In these, in this book, this is like the old Superman. He can leap tall buildings in a single bound, but he can't fly. Um, as a matter of fact, he never flies. He he can leap. He can throw things. A couple of times, he uh, runs on the electrical wires. It's something really classic from that old Golden Age Superman. This is Golden Age Superman, and they're doing it right. Um, I love that. The idea here is that there's a new Chinese family, and, and this is adapted straight from the radio serial. This was the story in the serial, more or less, that a Chinese family uh, was moving from Chinatown in Metropolis to the main city. They experienced racism um, from the Ku Klux Klan, 
and we get to meet the family and learn a little bit about them. It's a pretty nuanced portrayal of an immigrant family in the sense that, you know, the mother wants to kind of speak Chinese and the father is is really into the family assimilating and, and trying to like blend in and be less Chinese. And the kids are sort of split in that way. The boy sort of wants to fit in, but the girl is a little more sensitive about, you know, like not whitewashing, for lack of a better word, or, or their heritage. Um, another thing that's great is, is is Superman himself is sort of, they're toying with the idea. He gets affected by kryptonite. And so he starts having these visions of Krypton and of, of himself being an alien because of his alien origins. And this is obviously like a metaphor to show that, you know, what is Superman but the ultimate um, immigrant story he came, but from another planet, right? So he feels like an alien here on Earth, much the same way uh, that that this family feels like, you know, aliens in this part of Metropolis. And then here they are greeted by the um, uh, the, the 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 father's co-workers, and one of them's really nice, but the other guy says some really crummy things about bringing them a pie that. You know, and makes fun of her the mother's accent and says, "Hey, oh, it doesn't have. There's no dog in this pie. Just really crappy kind of stuff that Asian Americans have had to put up in this country for like a really long time, up until this very day, to 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 a large degree." Um, so this really rings true, right? This is like coming from. Uh, Gene Yang's real experiences growing up, but you know, also playing on historical references here. And not everybody's a jerk. Oh, here we see Superman running on the power lines, so it says so that he doesn't uh, get in the way of traffic. I love that. That's so cool. Um, this is a Superman who's like powerful, but he's way less powerful than the godlike Superman we know today. And I love that. Um, so anyway, we get a tale of assimilation. It's really it's well done. Uh, this art team is super experienced. This this is high quality comics. Um, the storytelling is really really great. The art is all on model and on point all the time. So, some people don't like the manga influence style with the bigger eyes and sort of a more simplified, less photorealistic style. But I to you guys I say ah eh, nuts. This is the kids love manga. This is aimed at younger readership for sure um the from the format to the art style so uh we want to pick up those manga crossover readers because those are the true readers of comics these days anyway you know we get to see some pretty serious stuff going on um we get to see the clan you know lighting a fiery cross on the lawn of of the family and you know molotov cocktails being thrown and uh Kids getting put in danger. We also get to see like sort of flashbacks to a young Clark Kent when he, he, he first manifested his superpowers and sort of first started to feel like an alien. He used to love pulp magazines with his friend, but you know, when, when his powers got revealed, sort of like, you know, he felt alienated. Um, it, Superman's a great metaphor for this stuff, and this really works for an immigrant kid who, who feels... Or, or, or son, child of immigrants like myself who might feel a little bit different from the rest of the, the culture sometimes. A, a book like this would be nice to have. Um, anyhow, uh, we get to see the story a, a lot more, you know, of subtle racism and ugliness from them not believing um, the little girl when she says her brother's gone missing. And even to show both sides of the story, which I loved from Yang, is that when... When when the clan lights a fire on the on their lawn, lights a cross, some uh, some black guys show up and, and are there to help. And the dad is sort of like wary of black guys and and is like, no, you guys get out of here until it's revealed one of them is a cop. And then he's like, oh, sorry, I didn't know you were a cop. So and and Yang even talks about this in the back. That was intentional to show that like just racism was just so much more ingrained in the culture then, um, and it and it's not as clear cut a story as. The oppressors and oppressees, right? It's it's a a, <clears throat> a lot more complicated than that. So anyway, um, I, I don't want to give away the story here. We got a, a a cliffhanger ending. We got some the kids in jeopardy. We get to see a little bit of Superman action. 
um, happening. But when we're ready for part part two and part three, right? So this is gonna end up being eight bucks per piece. Three of these is what is that? I don't care. The one is twenty four bucks uh, for two hundred and forty pages. That it'll eventually be. This is an eighty page story. Um, very readable. A lot of cool stuff going on here. Not a ton of action. Starts with a little bit of action, but not too much. Uh, here's my thing. This is rated E for everyone. It's meant for kids. I, like I said, I picked up the variant cover, and let's let's talk about this for a second. So I, I picked up the variant cover, and uh, uh, I really thought that uh, <laughs> not that variant cover. I thought that this Kyle Baker cover was cool but very inappropriate for this and why a variant cover on a book that's aimed for all ages right didn't really make sense um the tone while it's meant for everybody meant they had to cut some of the real racial slurs and yang talks about this at the end like when he was a kid he got used to get called a slur for chinese people that rhymed with ink as he puts it right we know what that slur is we don't need to repeat it here but it's not used in the book. They use other things like Ching Chong and Chinaman and other things like that um, that are offensive, but not as offensive. And But the thing is, you know, in books like this and things like Huckleberry Finn, where they want to remove some of the words that are deemed as offensive or racism, removes a lot of the context and truth of what happened during those times. And as ugly as those words might be, I feel like they, they have a place in a story like this to illustrate... Um, just the ugliness of that kind of culture. Uh, so I, I felt that the the use of the the variant cover here is a little bit um, weird. I it looked like it was for so many copies you got one of these. So it was like an incentive cover even. And I'm sure there's Kyle Baker fans out there, but this thing. Let's take it. Here. Again, one more time. This thing is a beautiful cover. I like Kyle Baker, but man, it's very misleading as to what this story is about. Superman smashes the clan up here real small. Like, oh, what a fun story for kids. This is going to be in the kids section. It's rated E for everybody. If you didn't look at this, if you just grabbed this and gave it to a kid, and then, you know, it opens up to the fiery crosses being burned by the clan, um, that might not be what you were expecting, especially if you gave it to a really young kid. It's rated E for everyone. That's everyone, right? So I could give this to my three-year-old. She wouldn't understand it. In fact, we I looked at it with her. It, it wasn't offensive to her, but it wasn't something she could key into or we could read together. So I feel like this is really not so much for, uh, for, for, for all ages, so much as it is for somewhat older audience, at least you know, elementary school to middle school. And and really who's going to read this probably most is uh, quite a few adults are going to read it. Um, if they're fans of the sort of uh, golden age Superman, right? And the old serials, uh, it's worth reading. You know, and while I'm here, I'm just going to, I'm just going to sort of go off on a tangent here about Superman and the golden age Superman. I think, you know, they've done this thing. Jeff Johns is trying to do this thing in, with the doomsday clock and Superman saying that like, as the universe, as the DC universe has been rebooted over the time, Superman has been rebooted and he's always sort of at the core. And so that Superman sort of stays with the time instead of making him like a golden age superhero, uh, a la like um, Captain America, right? So uh, instead of that, whoop, Superman is, uh, uh, you know, constantly sort of updated. I love the idea of Superman really having started in the, when he really did, like in the late 30s, early 40s, and, um, and being the same Superman to this day and aging over time and powering up over that time exponentially. So starting out as a child, he might barely have even close to superhuman powers but sort of as he becomes a kid super he's getting more and more powerful as he becomes superman he's leaping tall buildings uh only to be able to fly much much later like as his power grows exponentially he's getting stronger and stronger gaining these new powers over time um, i think that would be a great approach to superman in the dc universe wouldn't you love to see a superman movie set 
back in the 1930s, like a period piece uh, set in the Great Depression. There was a book, I think it was called Look Up in the Sky. I can't remember the author, but I read it and it was that way with a much lower powered Superman, a sort of true golden age style Superman where like, you know, he could, he got shot by a bullet and it hurt, didn't kill him. But like he wasn't the Superman that we know today. He's so invincible that his stories are often, you know, a little bit boring, a little bit low stakes. As we learned in my review of Frank Miller's Superman uh, year one, you know, when you've got a character that nothing can hurt it's really tough to create any kind of stakes or drama for that character. Um, Yang is able to do that in this book by introducing kryptonite, and by having a lower powered Superman, um, and by having like human stakes involved. Uh, so I recommend this book so far. I won't, I'm gonna read the other ones. I'm gonna um, check it out. I So far I enjoyed it. I feel like maybe 200 and 40 pages is going to be too long for the ultimate story. It maybe should have been one single volume that came out on one shot. Um, but this one ends on a cliffhanger, which is kind of cool for comics too. Let's get kids clamoring for that next issue of Superman Smashes the Clan. And speaking of clamoring, uh, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing on these videos. Um, if you made it this far in this video, I know you're a diehard, so I really appreciate it. And what I am loving more than anything is the action in the comments section uh, on these videos. We're getting some celebrities weighing in, uh, comics celebrities, uh, as well as uh, old friends of mine and new friends that I'm making who are putting some amazing insights in that comic section, which I answer and I curate. I don't allow garbage in my comment section. When I see that stuff, you're out of here, bucko. But fortunately, I haven't seen any yet. I've seen some criticism against me, some telling me to do some more research and work a little bit harder. I'm going to respond to that, and I'm going to double down on my research and make these videos as great as I can. And so until next time, thanks for supporting, and thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.